Right, welcome to our 2022 Pioneer BH280. Starting right in your back bumper here. Just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there. And inside of the back bumper, you'll find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears in the adapter here. It's helping hooking it up to your sewer system. And then the sewer hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit fresher. And then the cap just presses back into place. Right up the corner from there, you're gonna find your cable and satellite inlet. Coax cable, just plug into there, fire up at your TV location. Right around the corner is your outside shower. So as you open that up, you get your hot and cold water there, of course. Grab the shower head there, it just pulls on out. You get about a three foot hose to the standard head. Once you're done, just tucking that hose back in there. Just kind of locking it into its holder and close it back up. Right, up. right above that's the city water inlet. So you're just gonna pop that cap off, your water hose plug into there, turn on the water and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Hit it from there is your fill cord inlet. So the little notch in the bottom corner there lines up with this notch here. You're just gonna plug those in, give it a little eighth turn that'll lock it into place and then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. As you follow the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end here. Most campsites will have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. Otherwise, we do provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug into a standard household outlet, you've got the power to do so. Kind of straight up from there is your sewer outlet. So kind of press on that cap and give it a turn. You can pop it out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. That'll attach the same way where you're just plugging it in and giving it that turn until it clicks. Up here you can see we got labeled gray tank one and then wastewater in the back. So wastewater is going to be of course your toilet. So that's going to be what you want to dump first. Once that's done, you can then come to that gray tank. Gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So of course it's going to be your cleanest water. You want to dump that last. Straight up from there is a black tank flush valve. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So what you're going to do is just take your water hose and plug it into there, open up that black valve and turn on the water and that'll just flush out that tank for you to get rid of any sort of debris that could be causing your issue. Towards the front of the unit here, we get your storage compartment. So as we open that up, you just get the little finger there on the side, just holds it open for you. Inside of here, you'll see the customers opted to go with the weight distribution hitch. So we just got that stored in here for them. Around the corner. At the front of the unit, you got your battery box here. So your battery has housed inside of there. As long as you're plugged in through your short cord in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. If you loosen off these knobs here, you can push them back, open up the flaps, and you get access to your propane tanks. Just pull this right off. We can show you that change over in the front there. So it's currently red and pointing over here, so it's just letting us know we're running off of this tank, but we've got no propane. So as we open that up, it'll go green. Right, so that's letting us know we've now got propane. If it were to be red while well, you got the tank open, it's of course just empty. At that point, you just close it off, flip the change over to the other side, run off of that tank while you get the other one filled. In the front's a power tongue jack, so you get your lights, or sorry, light switch on the right there. Up is up, down is down. Around the corner is the other end of your storage compartment. Same little finger there, just holds it open for you. You find your water hose in here. Inside of that water hose, you find your park adapter. So your 30 amp cord into there, 15 for a standard outlet. Ready to use a power stabilizer switch. So as you press and hold extend, they will make their way out. They're not gonna level your unit, they're just gonna stabilize it. Once they're down all the way, they'll kind of hit a load on the motor. So once you hear the motors kind of load up, that's when you're gonna to want to stop. If you're to continue extending, you will actually strip the gears right out of them, which of course we don't want to be doing. Once you're done, just pressing and holding your track until they're all the way up. Same thing, just kind of waiting for that motor to kind of whine a bit. behind your entry door is labeled by that little sticker there we're going to find our low point drains so they're actually going to get back a bit more so the one here with the piece coming off of it that's going to be your fresh water tank drain the ones behind it are your low point drains low point drains just drain out the water system from the unit so if you're leaving the unit for a while you don't want your water going stale or stagnant you can just drain it out before you leave kind of up from there you'll find cable and satellite outlet as well as a power outlet so if you're looking to have tv outside you can Fresh water inlet right here. So water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill up your fresh tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent there. 
hot water tank right beside it. So just that little keyway there, you line that up and it pops on open. All the air controls for turning this guy on are just inside the unit. Before turning it on though, we just wanna hit this relief valve right there and you should get some water coming out. If you're not getting any water out, there's a chance this guy's empty. And of course you run the risk of burning out your elements when it's empty. So just wanna make sure it's full before firing it up. Furnace right behind it. So that of course does get hot. So you can make sure it's not blocked off whenever you're using it. Up from there, it's just a vent for your fridge. Nothing really there for you to worry about. Kind of up again, we got a vent for your stove. So you just want to make sure this flap here is opened up so that our fan inside can evacuate any fumes from the stove. Up again, and we find the two exterior speakers, one at the front and one towards the rear. And then your outside kitchen here. Flip that open, you get magnetic latches for this one. Got a 120 volt fridge here. So as long as you're plugged in, this guy's going for you. And then the little travel latch here, we'll just slide that over to the side slide this on open once you have it open all the way you can just kind of slide it again just kind of locks it on open for you so you get the sink on the side here it's this little attachment there you get two little ears there those will line up into there press it in give it a eighth turn then you get your hot and cold water there the base in there just kind of throw it off to the side whenever you're done the propane hose here just gonna run that down and kind of underneath the unit here and we get this little quick connect here you're gonna pull that dust cap out and then you can push that collar back insert the hose lock it into place once you have it locked in you can take that valve and open it up that valve is kind of also a safety because once you've got it opened up you cannot undo that quick connect collar right? so once that's all set up and open you can come up top to the stove turn it over to high grab a lighter and she fires right up right? once you're done just turning it back off letting it cool and storing it back away for the hose, I'm gonna close off the flow of propane, undo that collar, stick that dust cap back in there. And then just for ease of access next time, just kind of running it up through the back. Rear stabilizer switch right down underneath it. And then to the back of the unit, you get your tailgate storage, your spare tire, and then straight up top there, you'll see a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. I'm making our way inside of the unit. Your assist handle here just off 90 degrees and it falls into place so we can open up the door. The door just has a little T-latch in the back here. Just sits into that notch, holds the door open for you. For the stairs, you're just gonna pull that blue handle over and they flip on out. The little nut latch there, if you just kind of press that in, you can extend or retract your legs just based on your campsite needs. As we come inside, first things first, straight on the left here, you get your fire extinguisher. That's standard, pull the pin, point and shoot. Up in there, you get your monitor systems. So top left there, you get your battery. So press and hold that. You can see we're currently 12.3 volts, which is fully charged. Okay. Press tanks beside it. So as you fill that up, it'll go to a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Top corner here, you get your water pump switch. So as you turn that on, it turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank, pressurize your lines. In the middle here is your water heater with gas. So you turn that switch on, you get that little light there, letting you know your water heater is gonna fire up. The ignition sequence is gonna start. Once that light goes out, the sequence has started. It's gonna try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, this light's gonna come on and stay on. At that point, just off and back on to reset it. We stood right here, you can hear that whir of the flame. We know that tank is good. Bottom switch is the water heater on electricity. Okay. Straight off there, get your two light switches. The one on the right does your awning light outside. The one on the left does your interior lights. Your awning itself is on the far left, far right here. Press and hold extend. That awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric will be underneath the tube, accelerating growth of mold and mildew. There's the flap and there's the tube. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna hold some water anyways. So what you can do is just grab either arm, front or rear. You're just gonna pull straight down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. I feel like that angle better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just wanna make sure this arm's back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending it. Come back inside and press and hold the tract. That awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just gonna watch to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. And 
kind of the last thing to keep in mind if you're awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you're going to want to bring it back in. Again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Slide out's the same deal here. Just going to press and hold out. The slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we're just going to hear some clicks on the motors letting us know they've reached their stall. which is right up on the wall there. You just get the sliding door. It's got his travel latch inside of here. Just a little snap, pull that off. Closet space on the side here. As you open that up, you see you get a little light back here. It's also got a USB outlet on it. This is also CPAP storage. You do have kind of the access there with the power outlet. In the head of the bed is this reading right here. If we pick up the foot of the bed, you get access to a storage compartment. Same sort of closet space here with the same light and same access. Emergency exit behind me. You pull that red tab, you get rid of the screen, take the sandal here, throw it outside, hop on out. Blinds throughout the unit. I'll just sit where you leave them. Behind me is a TV backer. You can mount the TV right there. Power outlet for it, as well as your antenna outlet for it. Turning your antenna on, you just got that little button right there. Turns on that green light, letting you know it's turned on. And then also right here, you see that you are pre-wired for Wi-Fi. Entertainment area here, so you get your the power outlet there. And pantry space into the slide out, your lights just right there. Your table here, if you were to take that and wiggle it up and out of its legs, the legs will then wiggle out of their bases. You can take the tabletop and lay it onto these three ledges there. And then there's a little filler cushion right here that would fill in the center. USB outlets in the center there between the light and windows. Same light in this side here. Smoke detector right above our head. The center piece here does fold down. You get some cup holders there. You can also flip it up and the whole thing folds down to a bed. And in the kitchen, you get your storage up top here. That binder there's got all of your remotes in it, any owner's manuals, any keys, anything like that you're gonna find right in there. Above the sink is a light, hot and cold water at the sink, of course, and some storage down underneath it. A little in some floor space. Microwave up top here, pretty standard, just like home. Underneath it, you get your range vent, you get your light, as well as the fan. So this is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. Stove cover just slips on back. Turn your knobs over to light. Hit the spike here. There we go. Once you're done, just turning them all off, letting it cool down, and then dropping that cover back over. For the oven, I'm just going to open it up, turn that knob here over to pilot, and press and hold that knob in. And right in the back there. You can see that pilot light gets going. Once it's going, you just want to hold the knob in for another couple of seconds, then you can release the knob, the flame will then hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and it'll fire right up. Once you're done, just turn it back down to pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling, you're leaving the unit just to make sure it's right off. Fridge beside it, so as you open up the freezer up top, you see your power button on the left here. So as you turn that on, it's gonna to come to auto. Auto is first looking for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you're out dry camping and you want it running just on gas, you're gonna have that button come out over flush and fire up just on gas. If that check light there were to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, just off and back on to reset it. Fridge down under. Let's have controls in the top right there. Kind of a return grill for your furnace, so you just kind of make sure it's not blocked off. And then your entertainment area here for real. You start it off, and you get your TV here on the travel strap there, of course. So on a mount, and it comes out. All of your outlets are kind of right behind it, and your power outlet down here. 
Stereo here, power button up top is also your mute button, so you just want to press and hold to turn it back off. Zone 1 is inside, zone 2 is outside. Storage underneath. LP detector down on the floor here, so that's that propane's everything there, it sits on the floor. This guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Up above it is your converter. So you can see all of your breakers in the middle here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your breakers on the right side here. Whenever a breaker breaks, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know which one went. Storage space, so just the feet for the TV there. And some closet space, pantry space, whatever you choose. In the bunk space, you got little lights in the back corner there. Just got the USB outlets on them as well. Same thing down here. And then just a little doghouse storage. Up on the wall, here's your thermostat. So you press that bottom bar to wake it up. It'll go from off and then into fan low. It's just moving some air around with the low fan. High fan, same idea, just moving around some air. Cool high is where the compressor will come in and leave the high fan on all the time. Cool low, same idea. Compressor in and out is needed, low fan all the time. Cool low autos where it'll be an on-demand system where both the fan and the compressor will cut in and out as needed. Just in the high fan, same idea, just now it's using the high fan. After cooling high, it'll come into heat, we'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on the furnace. After heat, you hit that bar again, it comes down into off. With that air conditioner running, you got two different options. You got these two louvers here, you can keep them closed, and it will use all of its ducting to move our, our air. Or you can open them up, and it'll dump all of its air into the living room here. So you first get out to your campsite, you want it open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then open them up to start moving the air around. All right, straight down from there, it's an outlet. Then in the bathroom, the light switch is right up on the wall there. The one on the left is your light, the one on the right is your ceiling fan. For that fan, you just open up that vent. Then your medicine cabinets here. GFI protected outlet, test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Hot and cold water there, of course, as well as some storage down below. Toilet just flips on open and you get your flusher on the right side there. Into the shower, you get your standard head and hose, hot and cold water, of course. And I do believe that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204 237 7272.